tout le monde. Uh, de très bonnes nouvelles qu'on vient de... Very good news that I've just uh, heard. I'm very happy to learn that there is political mobilization to count, counter uh, tax fraud, tax evasion. I want to underscore the mobilization of the people, which sometimes uh, is lacking. People aren't uh, uh, sufficiently demanding of politicians that they set up procedures and take specific action to combat tax evasion. There seem to be two problems when it comes to mobilization. A lot of people aren't sure that tax evasion is really illegal. This is largely due to the fact that several states uh, compete on taxes and have gradually accepted certain practices which are based on tax evasion, tolerated these practices and even made them totally legal through the signing of tax agreements with countries that are tax havens. Several countries don't uh, drag uh, uh, those uh, uh, involved before the courts. Is it uh, a question of injustice? Is it just a moral issue? It is a moral problem. There are a lot of people for whom taxation per se is problematic from a moral stance. They consider that a person should be able fully to benefit from what they have earned. These people call into question the legitimacy of government to uh, levy tax on part of what people have earned on the market. I think you have to dispel these doubts in the minds of our fellow citizens in order to trigger mobilization against tax evasion. How can one achieve this? And you can all help in this respect. You need to become better in the story of economic successes. How do we present major economic successes in our society? It's problematical when it comes to combating tax evasion. Let's explain what I mean. We tend, in the stories we tell about people who've been hugely financially successful, we usually emphasize only the individual. We uh, talk about these people who are bigger than life and who have exceptional talents, uh, talents and a huge ab ability to work. Thanks to the strength of their character and talent, they have uh, reached the peak of uh, economic and financial success. These are stories used by many liberal thinkers on their right who oppose taxation. They say, well, imagine a person who's alone on an island. That person, thanks to his talents and motivation, is going to build uh, facilities, uh, create assets, maybe uh, create a, a vegetable garden and facilities uh, to raise livestock. Question, can one imagine any uh, real justification for uh, removing a part of what that person has produced? As the head of a neighboring state, could you say, well, your island is on our land, we're going to levy 10% of what you've earned? Or could you demand that that person uh, go and help someone else on a different island who's been less talented and was not able to produce uh, so much wealth? Intuitively, one would agree that under these special circumstances, there isn't much justification for demanding that that person redistribute part of his uh, assets. So the demonstration seems perfect when it comes to the guy alone on his island. There is no real justification for demanding that that person redistribute part of his wealth. Where's the problem? The problem is that you need to take a further step, and this is what they do on the liberal right. They say, well, society works in the same way. We're a whole pile of people living on an island, isolated from each other, and we produce, thanks to our talents, goods in different quantities, depending on our talents, the amount of work we do, our preferences, and so on. So. It's an analogy which seems uh, to bear out this idea. 
i.e., what justification is there for levying tax? This sort of justifies economic inequality. But it's a very bad way to explain the production of wealth in our societies. Just imagine what a person alone on an island can produce. Imagine the most talented person, the most virtuous person with the uh, greatest uh, capacity to work, put that person on a desert island for a given amount of time, and try and imagine what that person can produce. If that person manages to light a fire, that would be quite exceptional. So how can you explain that in our societies, we manage to uh, send telescopes into orbit to, to look at the confines of the universe? The big difference between someone on a desert island in our societies is uh, 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 living together. The production of wealth in our societies uh, takes place thanks to cooperation. And this entails work, specialization that's necessary to produce wealth. That is possible thanks to the division of labor. Some people have lots of children, make food, make clothing. Hence, you are free to specialize in more sophisticated areas. And then there's something that's even more important. We have a, a certain number of assets at birth. No individual is born naked in a cave with nothing around. We benefit from what was accumulated in past generations and what is available uh, thanks to the present generation. For example, assets, infrastructure, institutions. That's what Barack Obama had in mind when he launched his You Didn't Build That during the presidential campaign. He was basically referring to the fact that uh, industry, entrepreneurs, obviously have set up a, a, a company, but that company is only possible because there is a whole system which provided for the setting up of the company. There's another important thing. There is the intangible property, the sum of knowledge produced by past generations, and which was made available to us thanks to the various institutions uh, in society, knowledge, culture, languages, all these things which enable an individual who is born today to uh, start at a given point, X, and through innovation and creativity will uh, take this knowledge further. And then finally, this is often overlooked, you have standards. At present, there are millions of people who aren't uh, uh, attacking my children or stealing from my home. That social behavior is absolutely necessary for uh, people to feel motivated and want to create wealth. So without a given definition of our fundamental rights, for example, the right to, to property, we couldn't imagine the production of wealth. If you didn't have something protecting your property, it wouldn't be in your interest to, to invest so much time and energy in producing more wealth, because you would have no guarantee that you'd be able to benefit from it. So what problem does this raise? It raises the following problem. We should, people say we should benefit from the fruits of our work. That's very important. It's a source of motivation. It makes it possible to fight things that appear unfair. In the current situation, and given these stories, this kind of institution is a way of criticizing taxation. In other words, people are doubtful about the idea that there should be high taxes on successful individuals. However, if you provide a more realistic description as to the creation of wealth, if you include the need for social cooperation and the need for interdependency between individuals of producing wealth, well, this same intuition will show that there is a common wheel, and this uh, uh, is in favor of taxation, which is no longer viewed as a way of depriving talented individuals from uh, benefiting from what they produce. It would be viewed as a kind of debt to society because these individuals benefited from infrastructure and institutions which enabled them to produce all this wealth. There's a second thing 
One can better understand that people who earn more, who benefit more from this social cooperation, need to redistribute, need to compensate society more, not just uh, because they have more resources available, more wealth, but because they have benefited more from social cooperation. The fact that a person can rise to the top of the economic hierarchy is an obvious sign that that person has benefited more from social cooperation available at that time. So the fact that a person had, was more favored in terms of the of various assets around, for example, was born into a family that knows that education is important, was born into a rich family which uh, could meet all the basic needs, the fact that this person was born into a society with the schools, good schools, libraries, uh, internet access, uh, uh, better access to knowledge, well, that makes it possible to explain how the production of wealth takes place and also what determines the fact that one person as opposed to another produces more wealth than another. So, if uh, when it's talking about someone who's been financially successful, you put things back into this uh, perspective and setting, that enables you to uh, view luck in a different way. Luck is uh, very important when it comes to explaining someone's success on the market. It's not just luck in the abstract term. It's luck in terms of the relationship you have with institutions, the fact you have access to uh, material and intangible assets. That's a huge advantage. It's lucky that uh, may explain why people, men uh, succeed better in uh, uh, companies in the 50s and 60s than women. Also, standards were biased. Rules were biased in favor of men. If you don't uh, factor that in, you are, your explanation is uh, incomplete. So if you reintroduce this idea of luck or chance in our economic uh, production system, then you can better explain the production of wealth in our societies. You can justify better why you need to tax the rich more than the poor. And you can thus clearly condemn without a doubt, phenomena like tax evasion. In other words, you steal part of the collective resources of society and you use them for your own good. Thank you.